many people would believe me if I said that. Hey everyone, this is Gary Kay. We are here at CDA 2024 and I found something really cool that most people probably have not found on the show floor. This is, this is going to be, now if you watch this video, you're gonna remember I said this, and that is right now you're gonna not believe possibly and not understand totally what you're gonna see, but by a year from now, everybody's gonna be talking about this. I'm here with Michael Braithwaite, and you may know him from Netstream's fame, uh, Clear yeah, One fame, Crestron, Crestron fame. Uh, first off, Michael, uh, congratulations on all your success and now for starting uh, Modern Atomics. Absolutely. We are so humbled and honored to be here. Uh, this is really uh, a chance to kind of show what we can do. You know, over the years, you've probably used one of our power supplies or one of our products, but maybe didn't know about it. And so now we're here as an independent and, and you're going to see a lot of things coming. So. All right. So the, the key here's the, I'm going to dumb it down because I'm dumb. You're, you're the smart guy. This is you're the engineer. You're the patent guy. But imagine having a network switch with PoE that required no input power, but could still power all the shades in a house. That's just a start. And that's literally what you came up with. But you have two different models. Um, and we're going to actually explain each of these. So I'm going to come around here and show them. So you, you basically have um, the collider yes. and reactor. reactor, okay? And uh, can, if you can, I'm going to have Abby come over here. If you can, explain exactly what you're doing here because literally there, I'm gonna, we're going to show you this in a minute. There's no power going in. Yes. So what we have here inside of both of these units are these very state-of-the-art ESM modules. Typically, you don't see this in consumer electronics like this. It's usually something military or some spacecraft that, that's usually using this. But we've taken that same technology that's inside of here, and we have a couple patents of our own on this. And this will allow you to power up to 48 shades in one RU. Um, and there is no AC power. So on the back, these are another connections. So there's 24 PoE BT. So every one of these ports can do 90 watts. Uh, if you go look at a lot of PoE switches, this is really a real PoE BT switch, but it's specialized for shades. But if you look at uh, most switches, they can't usually do all 24 ports at uh, 90 watts. The other thing is there's, you'll notice no AC input. Yeah, there's no AC input. And by the way, this is Phoenix connectors because some shades require more power That's than right. PoE. Because they uh, a larger torque motor Actually, you can't do even on PoE. You have to do the larger gauge wire. So this is support up to 12 gauge. But it's still a, it's still basically a network switch yeah, that you're outputting PoE. Thing. Exactly, yeah, same thing. Same thing. So because you have no power there, that means you need no electrician, no conduit. Right. You know, you don't need but, any of but, that. But the truth is, power kind of comes in because as soon as you connect the network port to it, you're now providing the small amount of power you That's need correct. to regenerate That's more power. That's correct. That is correct. So the only thing you need here is on these bus ends, you would bring, we give a passive PoE injector, like a little injector that if, in case you don't have anything, you just plug that in. If you want to be ultra green, and I know all the rave guys want to be ultra green, you don't even plug the PoE in. We have this really awesome little solar kit. You take one solar panel, one solar, if you have a Tesla solar roof, take one of their tiles, you run that into our little PoE adapter, and then you plug it back in the bus. And now literally never any power to it. Yeah, so you can completely remove yourself from the power grid. Right. And ultimately, it's not a battery, it's ESM, so you're ultimately storing the power. And how long does that last, a few weeks? So if you had all the shades plugged in, so on these two nits, if I had so 48 shades, units, if I had 48 shades, all 48 shades, it would last about three weeks. So three weeks, all the shades would still operate and the same cycles that you would normally. And these front ports are for keypads and things. So even the keypads get the power. So if you really lost power, in Austin a few years ago, we had an ice storm, yeah, it was a freak ice storm, yeah. but for about four or five days, we were out of power. So all the keypads still get their power, all the receivers, so if they're RF, they still have their power and all the shades still have their power. What's nice about that is right now with a home, when you're putting in uh, shades, you have to decide what to do when you lose power pull them down all the way or lift them up all the way, but you'll still be able to control either them. Either way, you're stuck. If it's privacy, yeah. whoa. Yeah. But you might now you might need it for your light source. Right. If you have all the shades down yeah. for privacy. Well, I'm also not stupid. I know <laughs> that even though right now you're showing this with Somfy and shading systems and Lutron, yes. 
you could literally do anything PoE with this. I think the future yeah, of this is oh is everything, even AV over IP potentially one day over there. And this. we do support all the multicasting and everything. So it is a real. And, and by the way, he knows audio over the network. He patented it. So we're so trust me. We I think I see where this is going, Michael. That's right. That's right. So you know, it's from a from a shade power supply. We looked at all the power supplies that are out there. They're kind of the old designs. It's it's the same design they've had. I've even had guys at this show come up and Mike, I've been I've been using uh, the same power supplies for 20 years. I'm like, 20 years ago, people weren't talking about sustainability. People weren't talking about lowering the energy consumption, and the cost of energy was much lower. Oh, I should mention too, one of the nice features here is that even though the shading systems that you use are still trickling power in all the time, because they're just designed that way. Mostly because you, that way you don't have to have a huge amount of power rush onto the shade to turn it on or to make it go down or up. You actually can cut the power through the network completely so you're literally net zero. That's correct. Yeah. Even a PoE shade. And it's not the PoE manufacturer, like Sanfi has these new PoE right. motors, they're fantastic. Those motors, the problem is in the IEEE, the 802.3, when they were working on the BT spec, they're too coarse. The negotiation, meaning the, the PSE or the switch, is negotiating with the device, right. and they're, but the, they're too coarse. They're like two, and so the lowest one they have is about six watt, and that's good, like even power shades, that can run on all that. The problem is, that's still too much. Right, and that's going to be too much for the new California it's laws, still too actually. Much. It's still yeah. too much. So we have a special one where we can negotiate down to a quarter of watt. And a quarter of watt, even with 20 shades, you're well under the California law. So. Why do you need the Why do you uh, need the uh, amp meter on that? Meter? Because most people don't, they're unaware that their device pulls this QSN current. So all you have to do is walk up, plug in shades, you'll see how much they're pulling right away. So it's, inf it's, information, it's information purposes only. Plus we liked it, we thought it was good. Yeah, it was it's, got good. That, it's got that Macintosh yeah, vibe to it, I like that, with the blue LED behind well, it. The, you know what, because of our crazy names with Reactor and yeah. Stellarator and all the, all these names, uh, the blue, it, it is because we're a high-end audio show and all that kind of stuff, oh. true, but it's not blue because of that. In a real reactor, when they're go when the uh, you know inter international uh, nuclear energy goes and looks at reactors and inspects them, they look at the water the, where the tailings are, and they look and it's a blue color. It's called Chernovkov radiation. It's blue in color, and so we did the blue because we were because we're playing on the whole reactor name, and so it's blue from that. But so but there's a market. Good. It does work good from an audio marketing point of view. Too. Of course, of course. All right. To learn more, modernatomics.com, M-O-D-E-R-N-A-T-O-M-I-C-S.com. When are you going to ship? So uh, the reactor that ships this month, Collider ships uh, towards the end of this year. All right. You're going to see more about this at ISE at Infocom. But first, we're going to bring them to uh, Launch Week and have them do a demo at Launch Week, too. So learn more information. Go to raypubs.com. Type in Modern Atomics or go to modernatomics.com. Michael. Thank Congratulations you. on all your success. Thanks for watching. All of our coverage of Cedia is at raypubs.com slash Cedia. I really think that's Cedia.